you can interpret the ecg by just four 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 points look into the heart rate second point you have to see is whether the rhythm is regular or not the third point is what about the p wave and the pr interval is it normal or not and the fourth point is that the morphology just the morphology of qrs and with these four points you can clearly interpret ecg just 30 seconds firstly i am taking uh, our ecg where i have i wanted to calculate the heart rate the point here is normal heart rate is between 60 to 90 and tachycardia will be more than 90 bradycardia will be less than 60 per minute of the heart rate next point is rhythm so it is a regular rhythm why did i uh, ask you to look into p wave because if we if there is a p wave and the morphology of the p wave is normal and the pr interval is also normal then we can say there is a normal functioning sa node and there is a normal conduction of current from sa node to av node and one blinder that you need to remember is that p and pr in interval should be only half of the large box remember very 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 clearly p wave is present sa node function is normal pr interval is normal conduction is also normal and qrs complex is normal without any narrowing or without any broadening of the qrs and this ecg is nothing but a sinus tachycardia is first point i want heart rate maybe 45 or something like that less than 60 will be what bradycardia p wave is present and normal pr interval is normal nothing less than normal sinus bradycardia i want to calculate heart rate this clearly shows that the rhythm is irregular 12 into 6 is nothing but 72 we can clearly see at some leads we are having a tachycardia and some leads we are clearly seeing a bradycardia there is no pr at some areas and we have a pr interval being broader and prolonged and which is clearly showing there is a dysfunction in an sa node sick sinus syndrome that's nothing but tachycardia bradycardia syndrome what is the heart rate of this ecg that i have it's a regular uh, rhythm we can easily calculate by 300 by 5 which is nothing but 60 per minute my heart rate is can we see the p wave and the pr interval yes we can see the p wave and pr interval no it's not normal it's abnormal clearly we can clearly see it is occupying more than one box changes in the qrs and also there is a change in the st segment clearly st elevation changes are clearly seen in 2 3 and avf so i can say this is an ecg of inferior volume it is the reason for st elevation why there is st elevation so this is my ventricular myocardium so we have a transmural or a complete damage of the ventricular myocardium uh, depolarization wave which is moving from the endocardium to okay, but here due to the damage which is present in the myocardium the current will try very much very much to pass through pass through pass through but it finds very difficult to get through it that is why there is a so we clearly have a elevation the changes we see in an mi patient concept behind hyperacute mi in a hyperacute mi the patient whenever the patient will be having an ongoing severe chest pain and the patient will be having broad and tall t waves acute stemi that is nothing but the t wave which we have seen as a broad and tall t wave will be taking the st along with it or we can also see the same acute this is my st segment this is my st segment and this is my t wave the next type of mi will be subacute mi there is a t wave inversions yes this st segment will be present for at least minutes to hours this t wave will be present from minutes hours even for days this is how the patient's ecg wave will look and we can clearly see this is called as q wave and this is a t inversion and presence of this q wave which i have written as a small q is nothing but a pathological q wave so this pathological q wave is nothing but evolved or old mi right uh, the progression of mi will clearly indicate that the damage is being uh, more severe and it is transmural n stemi and another differential diagnosis is unstable angina in both of them we can't really find the ecg uh, changes but sometimes and the ecg uh, change in nstemi we can clearly see an st depression that's when the next investigation that is cardiac biomarkers we'll see ckmb troponin levels so if biomarkers are positive then definitely it is nstemi and if it is negative we can say it is an un- it is a possibility that the patient is having unstable angina we have heart rate to calculate here for 300 before 75 
per minute yes this is the regular rhythm ecg p wave and pr normal comes to qrs in lead v2 v3 v4 we can clearly see a tall broad t wave and also st is being taken along with it we can clearly say this is a anterior wall mi and let's move and look into another ecg we can clearly look into the heart rate first for almost 75 per minute and it's a regular rhythm ecg p wave the p waves and pr interval looks almost normal uh, t wave and st elevation avl t wave st elevation 1 then if 1 and avl are my lateral leads then definitely there should be changes in v5 v6 yes v4 change v6 is there there is v6 and v5 changes are also there then definitely there is a lateral leads having st elevation and tall t waves are also there we can say this is a lateral wall mi and the artery that is being blocked is lcx yeah the same way let us look into the heart rate somewhere around 90 to 95 will be my heart rate my rhythm will be regular rhythm so i'll take it as normal and pr is also normal and what about the qrs yeah qrs in my standard lead is normal with st depression this can be n stemi the damage is clearly present subendocardially now what happens to the vector of the st vector will be in the opposite direction here and the st will be representing the leads which are present right above it will be representing as a depressed wave what about the t wave inversions the t wave inversions will also have a concept and that's nothing but whenever there is a t wave inversion the damage is not transmural but intramyocardial damage is there right so whenever there is an intramyocardial damage the current which is going along can go but the repolarizations which are which have to come back will be stopping here that's the reason we'll be having a inverted or t inversions or a negative t waves about the occurrence of q wave pathological q wave even that has a concept so every wave which we see on icg uh, which is related to a disease has a concept and this is nothing but there is a bro, uh, diffuse ischemia of the ventricle okay the ventricle is under high tension of ischemia but there is one area which is completely damaged an electrical window being created the current which passes will reflect back that's the reason we have this pathological q wave the negative wave and a pathological wave due to formation of electrical window and let's move to the next ecg so the heart rate will be 75 almost maybe and we can say the rhythm is almost regular rhythm we have p waves so p wave and pr interval is almost normal so there is a concavity concavity one possibility that diagnosis is pericarditis and next topic we'll be moving on to discuss is the arrhythmias so we have an ecg here so the first thing as our basic point we have a heart rate it is a irregular rhythm it is 1 or 2 per minute and which clearly indicates a tachycardia there is no p wave whenever there is problem anywhere in the valves or whenever there is problem anywhere in the ventricles there will be increase in the pressures in the ventricle there will be increase in the pressure also right atrium and left atrium also. you know automated electrical foci which are present there and they will be sending activation impulses to the atrium both the atriums will lose their ability to contract whenever there is no lra contraction they will not be having any p wave this abnormal contraction of the ventricles resulting in the irregular rhythm and also tachycardia so that's the reason why in an atrial fibrillation patient will not have a p wave and will have a irregular rhythm and will have a tachycardia so in an avnrt so there will be a circuit forming around av node reentry circuit so it is present around the av node so it is constantly activating the av node before the av node could sense the atrial contraction or the impulse which is coming from the sa node it fails to recognize the conduction that is coming from the atrium p wave is not recorded on the ecg as the natural av node is only being activated the rhythm won't change tachycardia with the regular rhythm with the absent p wave that's what the basic difference you can clearly see right the next ecg we can look into is that so is the rhythm regular is also not regular and we have a certain morphology of waves which are looking like saw whenever there is saw toothed waves with a tachycardia with irregular rhythm p wave and pr interval not appreciated atrial flutter what happens is that in an atrial flutter 
there will be a re-entry circuit developing around the tricuspid annulus up to the cavo isthmus junction. This re-entry circuit which I have drawn will constantly activate the atrium and the ventricle irrespective of the SA nodal, AV nodal function. This circuit is the reason we are having flutter waves. We'll move on to the next ECG. So what is the heart rate? Irregular rhythm is there. 126. Can you see the P wave? Yes, I can see the P wave. Multifocal, atrial, tachycardia. So different, different foci are resulting in different kinds of atrial contractions, resulting in different kinds of P wave morphology. In order to say multifocal atrial tachycardia, more than three P waves should be present with a heart rate of more than 100. We can say it is multifocal atrial tachycardia and this multifocal atrial tachycardia is most commonly seen in a patient of COP. And let's move on to the next ECG that I wanted to discuss. Heart rate, what is the heart rate here? It is more than 200. The rhythm is regular here. P wave is present. The QRS is narrow here. A possible diagnosis, orthodromic type of ABRT. What is ABRT? Atrioventricle reentrant tachycardia. And what is the concept? behind this atrioventricle reentrant tachycardia is that we have a SA node which will be activating AV node then this will be activating the AV bundle and bundle of phase right bundle branch left bundle branch but what happens is that we have a extra pathway or a reentry circuit uh, which is being activated and this reentry circuit will activate the AV node again in an anterior direction this is called as orthodromic AVRT so another blinder is that any time uh, SA node activating AV node and AV node uh, activating the bundle of his and the ventricles are activated. Definitely the QRS will be narrow or normal. And if SA node uh, is activating some other electrical pathways in the heart and uh, it is not activating AV node first and the ventricles are being activated by that some other uh, accessory pathway, then QRS will definitely, definitely be prolonged or broad QRS icons. Let us move on to the next one. So next one we can also see the heart rate here is again more than 240 and we can also say that rhythm is almost regular again. Yes, we can appreciate P wave at points. The QRS is broad here. This is a possibility of antidromic type of AVRT. So this re-entry circuit which is activating accessory pathway early and forming a re-entry circuit at the level of AV node there will be tachycardia with a broader QRS complexes and this is an antidromic type of AVR. Heart rate 60 per minute almost a regular rhythm and I have a P wave. PR is very short and I can clearly see broad QRS is present. So this is clearly showing that SA node is activating some accessory path. This is WPW syndrome. So in a WPW syndrome, the accessory pathway being activated by the SA node first than the AV node, which is activating the ventricles or Purkinje fibers first. As the atrium contracts, the contraction wave straight away moves on to the accessory pathway. The PR is shortened. The QRS will be slowly moving and raising the delta wave appearance in the WPW syndrome. And here, heart rate is again more than 200 per minute, regular rhythm because the broad QRS RSS are present, tachycardia is present and this can be our ventricular tachycardia. Next we can have the ECG is again more than 200 per minute. It is almost having an irregular type of rhythm only and the patients, can we see the P wave? No, we can't anywhere appreciate the P wave. We can only see the QRS complexes which are broad again. Ventricular fibrillation, both ventricular fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia are commonly seen in a MI patients. Different tall dinosaur waves here. These are nothing but P wave. We see premature ventricular contractions. So first, let me talk to you about the first degree block. We having a prolonged PR interval constantly. When it comes to the second degree block, Mobitz type 1 and Mobitz type. So in Mobitz type 1, what happens is that we have a prolonged PR interval, but this prolongation will be increasing with every next wave. That means there will be a progressive or gradual prolongation of the PR interval and sudden dropping of the wave. When it comes to Mobitz type 2, we have the PR will be either normal or prolonged and sudden drop of the wave. The differentiating feature of Mobitz type 2 from Mobitz type 1 and also first degree block is that we have cluster of waves at one point. 2 is to 1 block. Basic point I will tell before I could uh, draw and show. For a every second wave, one wave will be dropped. Again, I'm telling for every second wave in the ECG, one wave will be dropped. This is the second wave and one wave is dropped. Let's move on to the next ECG. I can see P, P, P and this looks like a QRS. P, 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 P. 
and QRS is nothing but a complete heart block where we can see AV dissociation. There is a high chance the patient might end in a stole in complete heart block. So that's it. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much for uh, staying with me more uh, very patiently till all the way. This will definitely uh, make your concepts in ECG stronger, and you shouldn't be afraid and start panicking uh, if someone asks to ask you to interpret the ECG. Just follow the basic uh, points, and you will definitely get a diagnosis. Look into more number of ECGs; you will be uh, habituated with it. And I have to thank. Uh, one of my inspiration for learning the ECG and cardiology in such a way and thanks to my uh, idol and inspiration Srikant sir I always say uh, gratitude for him for uh, uh, bringing all the uh, you know uh, inspiration to get me, uh, to make me take medicine and make uh, making the cardiology so interesting for me uh, thank you so much sir and thank you people for making this session a wonderful one and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Dr. JTM and I'll be back with one more fantastic video. Until then, bye, all the best, prepare well, don't panic.